Dracula. Created in 1897 by Bram Stoker, the story of Dracula has been retold and reimagined countless of times for well over a century now. But what was he like originally? And how powerful was he? In this video, we are going to find out. Let's not waste any time here. Dracula is Vlad the Impaler. I know this, you know this, everybody knows this. Granted, nowhere in the book he is explicitly referred to as Vlad the Impaler, but it is heavily implied that he is. That's not new information. What you might not know is that at some point in his life, Dracula was a student at the Scolomans. I'm probably mispronouncing that. The Scolomans was a school of magic run by the devil himself. Only 10 students were allowed at the time, they were all thought magic, and at the end, 9 of the students were sent back to their homes, while the remaining one was chosen as the personal assistant of the devil on Earth. With his cool new magical powers, Dracula presumably enjoyed a relatively successful career as a military leader, until he died, and unlike what happened to the historical Vlad Tepes, apparently, when Dracula died, he was buried in his castle, and based on the vampire lore established by the book, after he died, Dracula was reanimated by the devil himself and became a vampire. Note that he is not the first vampire. He was never the first vampire. He is not the first vampire in literature, and even in the book, Dracula is never stated to be the first vampire. There were other vampires before him, he is just another one. In the book, he is referred to as the King Vampire, but that's because he lives in a castle and in his life, he was royalty. Calling him King Vampire is just a title, a formality. He is not literally the king of all vampires, nor is he the first one, and spoilers, he is also not the most powerful. After becoming a vampire, Dracula spent 421 years feeding on the people of Transylvania. Eventually, the people there learn how to protect themselves from Dracula, so he decides to move and go to London, because there's a lot of people there and they don't know about him, which means there's tons of food there. This is his character motivation, by the way. Food. That's it. At the end of the story, Dracula obviously dies and London is safe. With the boring part out of the way, let's talk about the good stuff. In the book, vampires are also known as Nosferatu, and in general they are all immortal. Specifically, they do not age, nor can they die of old age. When a vampire bites you, you are infected with vampirism, and when you die, no matter how you die, you become a vampire. The only way to not turn into a vampire will be to kill the vampire that bit you, because when a vampire dies, all the people the vampire infected with vampirism are healed. Also, after the vampire bit you once, you will seek out the vampire out of your own volition, which makes it easier for the vampire to feed on you. In addition, Dracula is as strong as 20 men. It's kinda tricky to determine exactly how strong one person is, but assuming a normal person can lift anywhere between 50 to 100 kilos, which doesn't sound crazy or unrealistic, this would mean that at minimum, Dracula can lift 1 or 2 tons. So the dude's strong enough to lift cars. Dracula also has shape-shifting powers. He can transform into a wolf, he can turn into a bat, and he can turn into mist. In his mist form, he once spread himself until he could cover an entire ship. This means his mist form has a range of several meters. Also, in his mist form, he is basically intangible. Hitting him, it's like hitting air. Speaking of shape-shifting, under the light of the moon, Dracula can turn into elemental dust and travel on top of the moonlight. I don't know how fast he would be when doing this, I'm tempted to say he would be traveling at the speed of light, but mm, I don't feel confident about that. And even if he could move at light speed, he can only do this as long as he's under the light of the moon. So you know, that's kind of restrictive. Dracula can also control certain animals. Rats, owls, bats, foxes and wolves. The control he has over these animals is limited. If the animals get too scared or hurt, they will go back to normal and Dracula will lose control over them. Also, he can, to a certain extent, adjust his size. We don't know if he can become bigger, presumably he can, otherwise he would have done it, but what we do know is that he can squish himself and become thin so that he can pass through really narrow places. Dracula can also teleport, but first he has to physically know the place where he's teleporting to. He also knows necromancy, can see in the dark, doesn't cast a shadow, you can see his reflection on a mirror, he can paralyze people, and he has hypnotic powers. Dracula also possesses an ability called the baptism of blood. It's a sort of ritual. Dracula first makes the victim drink his blood. When a non-vampire drinks the blood of Dracula, a psychic connection is created, and Dracula can see and hear what that person sees or hears. On top of this, Dracula can control them at will, even if he's really far away, and that person will obey. In theory, this means Dracula can turn anyone into a seemingly perfect 
perfect spy and an obedient servant, but there are downsides to this ability, we will talk about them later. Finally, and I consider this his most powerful ability, Dracula can control the weather. He can summon things like storms, lightnings, snow, etc, etc. He has a certain limit as to how much he can control, but he once conjured a storm big enough to move a ship. And that's it, these are all the powers of Dracula. Not bad, honestly. However, he has weaknesses. Boy, does he ever has weaknesses. Dracula is one of the characters in all of fiction with the most amount of exploitable weaknesses. Let's go through them. Dracula has an extreme aversion to religious symbols. In the book, the main characters use crosses to repel Dracula, but also they use the white cookie thingy they serve on churches, because, get this, any Christian related thing would work. You could even use bullets as long as they are sacred. I guess you just pour some holy water on your gun and then boom. Honestly, this aversion to religious imagery is really strange and confusing because there are many times throughout the book when Dracula goes inside or near churches slash chapels and he seems to be fine. I don't understand how that works, but hey. He apparently is physically incapable of touching religious things, but if someone were to touch him with a Christian object, his skin would burn. Also, Dracula, well, all vampires in general, really, can't stand garlic. And for some reason, all vampires do not like a plant called wild rose. It's not explained why, they just don't like it. In addition to this, Dracula does not have healing powers. No matter how much blood he drinks, he cannot regenerate better than a normal person. Earlier in the book, he gets hit on the forehead with a shovel, and after the wound healed, he is left with a scar on the forehead for the rest of the story. And that kind of sucks for several reasons. For example, if you were to touch Dracula with a religious symbol, he'd get burned and then he'll have a scar for the rest of his life. But what if you chop one of his arms? Or what if he loses a leg? And speaking of losing body parts, Dracula dies if you cut his head off. Well, according to the book, the only way to kill a vampire is by cutting its head and stabbing or burning its heart. But what happens if I only do one of those things? Like, what if I just cut its head? Is he still alive? And if so, what happens now? He doesn't have healing power, so now what? Furthermore, Dracula cannot cross running water no matter what. Even if he transforms into a bat, he cannot fly over it. But if you were to throw him into running water, he dies. Running water includes things like oceans or rivers, but isn't rain technically running water? And also, there's water running through the hose in my garden, so if I spray him like a dog, does he die? On top of this, Dracula automatically loses his powers when the sun rises, and he is forced to remain in whatever form he has until noon or sunset. Meaning, if he transforms into a bat and the sun comes up, he has to stay in the form of a bat, a regular bat with no powers, mind you, until midday. The sun itself does not harm him, and he can walk around in the middle of the day no problem. The downside is that he doesn't have any powers, and he is stuck in whatever form he has for hours. Although, there is a way to work around this limitation. If Dracula goes to his coffin, slash lair, or any place that is considered unhallowed or evil, he can transform freely and use his powers again. Speaking of his lair, Dracula cannot rest anywhere that doesn't have the soil where his descendants have been buried. That's why, when he travels to London, he carries 50 boxes of dirt with him. Though if you put anything religious in the dirt, it gets purified and Dracula cannot sleep there anymore. But he's undead, why does he need to sleep? I hear you say. Well, you see, when Dracula, or any vampire for that matter, eats too much, they get sleepy and go into a hibernation state. And they sleep throughout the whole day and wake up at night. But even if they haven't filled themselves with blood, vampires spend the whole day sleeping anyways. After all, they don't have powers until night, so why would they go outside? Also, as vampires use their powers, they get tired and need to drink blood to recover their energy. But also, they really, really like blood. They can't control themselves when they see blood, and that's kind of a weakness if you ask me. Vampires also cannot enter a place unless invited, but they can get around this limitation by having an ally inside the place and have the ally letting them in. Finally, the baptism of blood has a horrible weakness. Like I explained before, the psychic connection lets Dracula see and hear anything the victim does. However, this works the other way around, meaning the person can also see and hear what Dracula does. This is how Dracula ends up getting defeated in the book, because Throughout this connection, the humans know where Dracula is, and by tracking his location, they eventually find him and kill him. Also, you can't even use this ability to create spies, because 
drinking the blood of a vampire slowly starts killing you and if the vampire bit you as you die you start to show signs of becoming a vampire so everyone could tell you were bitten and i know what you're gonna say aha uh -huh, but all the vampire has to do is not bite you just make you drink his blood and that's it perfect spy and sure but remember vampires really really like blood they are not going to miss the opportunity of biting you when you are right in front of them in fact that's exactly what dracula did and that's why he died and yeah that's pretty much it that's dracula well i guess i didn't talk about his personality or his physical appearance but who cares about that so time to answer the question how powerful is dracula not that strong if i'm honest don't get me wrong he has some good abilities but the problem is that he has way too many weaknesses and yes of course i understand that dracula was not written to be strong he was written to be scary i get that i'm just saying he's not that strong and honestly he doesn't need to be at the end of the day Dracula has one thing no other vampire in fiction has, an immortal legacy. Here we are, over 100 years later, still talking about this character. With that said, thank you for watching, and I see you on the next one.